Fumigation differs from a pest control treatment in the sense that a fumigant is a true gas. That's the reason the tarps are placed around the structure to contain the fumigant during the entire process. Typical fumigation process is a three-day, two-night procedure. The first day, the crews will install the tarps, set up the shooting placements within the structure, and inject the fumigant. We then need to reach what we call equilibrium, where the gas is in equal parts within the structure, and we need to contain and hold that level for the required dosage period. On the second day of the fumigation process, the crews will arrive and initiate the aeration. You will still notice the tarps on the exterior of the structure, but the gas is beginning to ventilate. On the third day, the crews return to the structure, remove the tarps, and then begin walking through the inside with a device to check the breathing levels. This will be checked in all areas of the home to make sure it's safe for you to re-enter. Once you re-enter the structure after the fumigation, there's no need to wash anything down. There's no dust or powder or smell. The fumigant itself is odorless and colorless and lighter than air. So you won't actually notice the fumigant inside the structure. For these reasons, we install a warning agent that is very similar to tear gas. There is a watering of the eyes and sometimes you'll experience a scratchy throat. But the warning agent is installed as a security measure. So if you do experience any of these symptoms or have any kind of an odor, this is the warning agent and not the actual fumigant that you are experiencing. All exterior doors and entryways to the structure will be locked, so we will need a key. In addition to locking the doors, we will install an additional secondary locking device to prevent anybody from entering the structure during the fumigation process. Please also keep in mind, we do not provide on-site security, so remember to remove all your valuables during the fumigation. If you are concerned about security, please ask us about an alarm system that might be available as an option for you to install in your home. As always, if you are concerned, please notify your neighbors that you will be vacating and having a fumigation done, and you may also ask for your local police or sheriff to do extra patrols. The most common question that I'm asked after we perform a fumigation or any type of termite treatment is, how do we prevent the termites from coming back? The most important thing to keep in mind and what we always recommend is to have your home inspected at least once a year. We have control service plans that will allow us to come out and do an inspection on your home once a year and provide for an additional treatment and repair, including fumigation, if necessary. So please ask one of our representatives for an ongoing treatment plan that might suit you. And now here's Mike to walk you through some of the preparation for a fumigation. I'd like to talk to you today about preparing for a fumigation, and there's only a few things that you need to be concerned about. Probably the most important thing you'll need to worry about is bagging your food. And the simple rule of thumb is anything that's orally ingestible, it is not in a sealed bottle, jar, or a can, has to be bagged. So for example, a jar has a top that goes pop when you open it. A bottle has some form of paper or a seal that seals it prior to entry. Cans obviously need a can opener to open. And items like wine will have either a cork or some sort of a seal that shows that it's never been opened. So that is the key to what items don't have to be fumigated, is that they simply have a factory tamper-proof seal that's never been broken. If for any reason those seals have been broken, then you will indeed need to fumigate them. So for example, peanut butter that's been opened has had the seal removed. Bottled water that has the broken seal on the, around the edge. You need to address all your products that are not in a seal of any kind, so produce and items in the refrigerator will also need to be bagged. When you're ready to bag your food, you're going to need to get all the food from throughout your house. And that will include the Arby sauce in the back drawer of your kitchen, mints, candies, chewing gum, and all of your food products. You need to bag your, your food in the bags that are provided by the fumigator. If for any reason you run out, please let us know so we can give you more bags. You're going to need a double bag, which means you simply take the first bag, replace it inside the second bag. Place all of your food that's either opened or has inappropriate seal inside the bags. Go ahead and place all your food products in there. You're going to take the inside bag, you're going to twist it, you're going to kink it over and that creates the seal we're looking for. You simply hold that seal with masking tape, rubber bands, or twist ties. Once the inside seal's been done, you do it one more time. it with the tape. And the tape is simply holding the kink in the bag. You're not sealing it with the tape. 
Once that's completed, you can leave this finished bag anywhere you like. If they do have refrigerator type items, place that back in the refrigerator. And since it'll probably be larger than it was, if you simply remove the, the drawer or the shelf, you can set the whole bag inside. One note, squeeze as much air out of it as you can, because if that bag holds the door open, the food's going to spoil. Your fumigator will need access to all the interior spaces within the structure. All the doors will be locked during the fumigation will never be left open, and the windows will also be locked in position. Uh, they will need a key to the interior. They'll need to be able to access and you'll need to provide that key to the fumigator. Vehicles may be left in the garage, but again, they are a confined space and will need access to their interiors, including the garage. Please note that valet keys do not allow us into the, into the trunk and that can be a problem. Areas within the, the structure that are normally locked, such as safes, closets, and office doors, will need to be unlocked during the fumigation process. If you do have a safe, please let us know in advance so we can make special precautions so you don't have to leave that, that area. Before we can fumigate, the gas service is going to have to be turned off by the gas company. The fumigation company will call to schedule that appointment to have the gas turned off, and that will occur between 7 and 12 o'clock on the day of the fumigation. You won't have to meet the fumigators for that part. You will need to call the gas company to schedule the restore appointment. Uh, that appointment will be on the day you return home. You can schedule that as early as 12 o'clock, and you will need to meet the gas company and let them in. They'll want to check all your pilots to make sure that they're operating before they turn the gas back on.